Praise the Thank Lord. God. Appreciate you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Doesn't uh, Pastor Steve just look sharp all the time? <laughs> All the time, he does. You know, we're, we're talking about stuff we, we have in common earlier. <laughs> and, uh, man, he, he just, he's got a, a sharp, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, taste. Taste, okay. Amen. Uh, Praise the Lord. Those boots, too. I don't know about the boots, but everything else is good. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> somebody, somebody one time wanted to cast that uh, flashy devil that out flashy. of Brother Hagen, <laughs> and uh, he said, "No, that's the one I want to keep." Praise the Lord. Oh, <laughs> Amen. You know, if, if nobody's done this yet, but if somebody were to come up to me and say, "Well, I, I just don't like the way you dress. I think you're you're too flashy." Well, you want to know the truth about it? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I guess it was. Uh, over a little over a year ago, year and a half ago now, uh, I had prayed. And I said, "Lord, I, I, you know, you called me to preach. You called me to go out and to minister and to travel." And and the clothes that I had at the time were they were worn out. Just to be honest about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I asked the Lord for some clothes to go preach in. Now a lot of people they, they they're dressing down now. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I wore jeans tonight just so that Pastor Steve wouldn't feel so bad. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> but anyways, uh, I prayed and asked the Lord for clothes, and He gave them to me. Amen. Yeah, God blessed my wife, and 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 she bought me clothes, and <laughs> not that I was even asking her for that, you know. But God blessed her, and and uh, that that was that was her believing in the ministry. Amen. That's good. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, uh, I was I was at a place uh, up in Canada. A lot of our ministry is up in Canada, and and so uh, uh, I, I wanted to find a pair of shoes. I was I was looking at your shoes there too, but uh, I was uh, we, we were doing some errands that day, and I, I said, you know, does does this men's store over here do they have shoes? And uh, the guy said, uh, "Yeah, yeah, they do, but they're they're way too expensive, o overpriced, you know." I was wanting to spend you know, about maybe fifty dollars, something like that, on a pair of shoes, and and uh, they were like, you know, three and four times that much there. Well, anyways, I, I said, "Well, let's just go in anyhow, and and we'll just have a look at them." And I had not found a pair that that I had even liked, and so. Uh, uh, we get back there to the area where they had the shoes, and they had this display, and there was a. Now I, I'm assuming it was a spotlight. In other words, it, it, it might have, it might have been the glory that was there, but it was like these these shoes just begin to sing, La! and uh, and I looked at them, and, and and they they were probably three times what I wanted to spend, and I'm just looking at them, and the salesman, of course, they they pounce on you, and and I I wasn't even trying them on, you know, but they were just beautiful shoes, and uh, some guy come up to me. And he had been in the healing meeting uh, the, the night before, if I remember correctly. But he was there at the meetings anyhow. And, and he comes up to me. And you know those that old-time Pentecostal handshake? Where they you know, slip something in your hand? He slipped me a wad of $100 bills. And said, here, don't tell my wife. And bought me, <laughs> <coughs> bought me two pairs of those shoes and still had a hundred some dollars left over. Glory Amen. So if, if somebody were to complain and say, well, I, you know, I just don't like how you dress. I think it's too flashy. Well, take it up with God. He's the one that gave me everything. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so uh, there, there was one guy. Uh, he got, I don't know why I'm sharing this. He got into my car. And uh, <clears throat> he's, he, com he griped and complained about the vehicle that I was driving. <laughs> and he's, uh, at a different time, he said, I just want you to know i got a big problem with, you know, Kenneth Hagin and, and Kenneth Cope and these prosperity preachers. And so I looked at him, I said, then you got a real problem with me, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Amen. Well, it, it's unfortunate that he died young. Yeah. Uh, well, years before his time. Wow. But, uh, you know... <laughs> 
you can't fight against the Word of God and the blessings of the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. I heard uh, John Hagee today say something that uh, just really uh, dropped inside of me. And I, I don't really get the opportunity to listen to a whole lot of other uh, ministers, but uh, he said, you don't pray for blessing, you tithe. <laughs> and you give. Yes, See, there's a lot of people, that, they're, they're saying, oh Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me, and yet they don't tithe, they don't give, they don't sow. Yes, well, that would be really dumb of a, of a farmer to say, oh Lord, bless Bless this crop, bless this harvest, and, and, and they don't have any seed in the ground. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, the, the, the supernatural things of God are no more supernatural than, than if a uh, farmer were to sow seed. Sure. Amen. Yep. You know, uh, whether it's ranching. Now the Lord's not allowed me to, to be a rancher or, 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 or farmer or, or stuff like that. But man, if, if I could, I'd be the best one out there. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I would be the, I would have the best and the most cows of anybody <clears throat> because I know how to get them. You want to know what I would do? Give I would give away cows. <laughs> <laughs> I would. That's good. Amen. That's good. Oh yeah, but but brother, they're, they're they're expensive. You don't understand. You know, it it it'll, it, it can cost two thousand dollars for you know a really really good cow. So. If you've, if you've got 10,000 of them, what's giving away one of them? Come on. Come on. That's good. Amen. That's right. I mean, look at what God did in the Bible. He's throwing certain kinds of little branches in the watering trough, and, and, and then they come back speckled and spotted, and, and, and some of them solid color, and... I mean, that's a work of miracles. Oh, no. mm -hmm. That's so good. See, sometimes we think of, of, of God moving in a church service, but God wants to move in your business. Come on. Come on. He wants Come on. to get in your business. He wants yes. to get in, 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 in stuff. That's right. Amen. That's right. So and, you know, if we want to be blessed, you got to do what the Bible says to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and if you want deeper things then you got to do deeper things. That's good. That's good. Amen. <clears throat> You're not ever going to get out into the deep things of God uh, twinkling your toes uh, while you're sitting on the beach. Come on. Amen. you got to sometimes get out there uh, into an area where your feet can't touch the bottom. Mm. Do you remember when you were kids and, and really for the first time somebody took you out into the deeper water? Mm-hmm. Do you remember how that it was uncomfortable a little bit? Or maybe your parent took you out uh, you know, on their back to the raft out there in the deeper water where all the big kids play and put you up there and, and how you felt on top of the world until they told you to jump back into the water. <laughs> you know, been there, done that, you know, at, at the resort. But uh, the, the same is true with, with spiritual things. Sometimes it can be uncomfortable. There was a, a documentary uh, that I watched uh, some time ago by uh, James Cameron, I think it was. He did a documentary about going to the, some of the deepest parts of the ocean. And, and I was interested in that because life is very different the deeper that you go. True. You're right. And the deeper that you go, there, there were creatures down there that their whole life was adapted to the crushing depth. Mm -hmm. Until you got so far that that natural life could not exist without help. Mm -hmm. Such as, uh, you know, special suits and breathing apparatuses and, and, and different things. And the scripture plainly tells us that deep calleth unto deep mm -hmm. and and God wants to get you to a place and get us to a place that that it is so deep that that you could not survive on your own without his help that's good and and, and so many times we're, we're wanting to to cling to what's familiar we're wanting to cling to what we uh, are used to mm -hmm. that's good but if, if we cling to what we're used to, then that's all we'll ever get is what we're used to. That's good. That's really good. And so there, there comes a time where we have to let go of the shoreline and to begin that process of, of going out deeper. Yes. Now, as a minister, uh, you, know, you might look at me and say, well, yeah, but you know, that's easy for you to say. Not always. <laughs> Come on. Not, sometimes you know, you'll, you'll get into an area where your knees will just absolutely knock. The Lord will tell you to call somebody out and minister to them. And, and we get really excited about that. But yet, if you're really being moved by the Holy Ghost, you might not at the moment 
have the foggiest idea what you're going to say to them. That's right. <clears throat> you simply call them out by faith, and you have no idea what's going to happen next. <laughs> and no idea. It's true. Amen. <laughs> See, the, the way that the Lord used me is, remember when, when we were kids, and, and you might have played with magnets, and you could put them close together, and you feel the push and the pull of the magnets? Mm -hmm. Well, there's an invisible force there that you can't see, but you can feel it. And so sometimes the Lord will, it'll just be like that magnetic pull to, to minister to somebody, to reach out to somebody, to help somebody. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you have the foggiest idea what you're going to say, but you know that the Lord's wanting you to, to, to move that way. Well, that's just what you do. That, that's a little bit deeper, deeper place. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, there was a service that we had. Uh, just a matter of a couple weeks ago now, <clears throat> where, I mean, everybody in the church got drunk in the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 And, and people were laughing and falling on the floor. There was, there was a picture of one gentleman. You, you would, actually, both of you would, would know who, Robert Bowmaster. Mm -hmm. He's about as straight-laced and, I mean, prim and proper, perfect as, as they come. All right, and somebody snapped a picture of him, and he looks like he's stoned. <clears throat> All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually have the pastor send me the, the picture of him, okay. and, um, and y'all have met uh, Robert Bowmaster, I'm sure. Uh, and, I mean, he's one of the most intelligent. He's a he's a scientist for the government, uh, a, a biologist, and so uh, he's. I mean, he's as straight laced and perfect as they come, uh, and, and I mean, he he the. The expression on his face is he was totally stoned. And I mean, and people are running around the church and, uh, just like a, a flock of birds. Just and, uh, and I mean, we all had a good time. The next service, we went probably 20 minutes and not a person moved. You could hear a pin drop in the, in the silence of just being the presence of God. Amen. Two absolutely different services. Mm -hmm. But you want to know the one that everybody talked about the most? The quiet service. Yeah. Mm. Now see, the one that everybody was drunk and laughing and running and carrying on. Now, now that was wonderful. That was great. Wouldn't change for the world. All right? But it wasn't as deep mm -hmm. as when we sat there in awe in the presence of God. That's good. Praise God. Yes, and I mean testimony after testimony. Nobody prayed for them. Nobody laid hands on them. Nobody ministered to them. There, there wasn't a word of knowledge over, or over anybody. But God began sovereignly in His own presence to minister to the individual needs of people that were there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And see that that was a deeper service. Amen. And that's ultimately what God is doing is He's wanting to get us to deeper places Come on. in Him. Come on. And that's really kind of a theme of what God's doing. People will say, you know, what, what's God doing these days in the churches and, and around the world? It's coming to a deeper place. Mm. And how many of you have noticed, particularly here in America, just, I mean, absolute darkness and rioting and people just seemingly going nuts and crazy, even around the political world. <clears throat> there was a word, that, a prophetic word that came out a few weeks ago that, that began to touch on that. And it, it was surprising to me. But, and, and here's the picture. How many has ever mopped your, your floor before? Well, you go in there first and you sweep everything up. Mm -hmm. At least that's how I would do it. You sweep everything up. And then, now, no, just bear with me for a little bit. You might dip your mop in the bucket. There's some people that they'll take the bucket and they'll pour it out on the floor. That's true. And then mop it all up and squeeze it back in the bucket. So, wh whichever way you do. But when water is applied to the floor that's been swept, what happens is the water brings to the surface all the stuff that you didn't sweep up that's still in the cracks. Mm -hmm. 
And so with an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, then what's happening is you're getting all the stuff out of the cracks so that it can be mopped away. Yes. And that's exactly what's happening in our day is I'm not bothered by all this rioting and, and crazy stuff that's going on. I mean here, oh, even over Donald Trump, people are just rioting, burning flags and, and, and just going crazy over, you know, Hillary not getting into the into the, the White House. And I mean all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, it doesn't bother me at all because I know what's happening is God is moving, the Holy Spirit is being poured out, and there's a lot of stuff that's coming to the surface in order for it to be dealt with and, and brought away. Now, <clears throat> when that happens, we rejoice. Yes, we rejoice because God's being poured out. Yes, yes. The Holy Ghost is moving and manifesting Himself. And you watch, that's exactly what will happen, is, is God will move and sweep through, and a lot of that stuff will just be blown out of the way. Amen. I just threw all that in for free. <clears throat> you know, amen. Now go back with me to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now, if I'm going to be perfectly honest, um, you know, I, I had mentioned how that the Lord uses me. Now, I, I, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, we need to get right back into this, you know, Luke chapter 4, and, and, and let's take on with that. But, at the same time, we have to obey the Holy Ghost, right? Yes. Absolutely. Amen. Now, of course, I don't try to embarrass anybody or, or put anybody in the spot. But I, 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 I sense to minister to somebody. Sister back there with, with the red coat. Now, that, yeah, that's you. Would you mind just coming on up here for just a minute? Praise the Lord. Now, see, I would, I would be disobeying the Lord Amen. if I didn't that's call right. you out. That's right. Now, as I said before... Now we've met, of course, in, in different times I've been here, and you were talking with my wife earlier. When I walked outside this morning, I could not see a thing. And, and so I just, I just went to the vehicle, honestly. But, but I felt this morning to call you up. But the, the service went a different way. And I, I'm trying to get into the Word of God here tonight. And the Lord says, no, you need to call her out. Amen. Amen. And so in my mind... I don't have a clue what I would even say to her. Amen. Mm -hmm. But see, we don't we don't depend on our mind. So you understand that, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I don't know anything about you it, from the natural standpoint, other than that you you've come here and I've met you before, and that sort of thing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, see, the first word that comes up in my spirit is the word business. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Shipra kaska da braga va vovonzai. Mando prosko prukaska da baka prasite. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we just come to you right now. And Father, we just look to the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sombra kata jepra koskondro po prakarabasita. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sora Karabashanda. Thank you, Lord. Father, we don't want to operate from our mind. We want to operate from our spirit. And thank you for helping me to hook my tongue up to my spirit quickly. Because it's from the issues of the heart that matters most. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 For thus saith the Lord, Your business is not over. Your business, in many ways, is coming into the greatest period of time that you have ever known. For the devil has tried to stop and tried to hinder and make things difficult. But if you make the right decisions and follow the leading 
of the Spirit, you'll come into a very easy place. A place of great blessing to you and to your family and to those that I bring into your life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And yea, even the devil that has tried to hinder you in other areas, he'll be put on the run. Thank you, Jesus. And sent to flight. And there'll be great cause for rejoicing you, in you and in your family. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Is that all right? Yes. Does that mean anything yes. to you? Yes. Thank you Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So thank you, Lord. Father, we're just so grateful and thankful. Thank you, thank you. thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we praise you. We magnify you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we hunger for all that, that you have for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So Lord, we're just let's just turn our attention on him. Let's press in with our hearts into all that he has for us tonight. Lord, we magnify you. Lord, we glorify you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Brother, you, uh, is it Robert? You you had come to, to me. Come on up here if, if you would. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Now you said, you gave me permission this morning if the Lord ever said anything. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we just Lord. praise you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we yes. thank you. Yes, we do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Word of God is always God speaking unto you. It's not what man says that's of much importance. It's what does the Word say. Keep your eyes focused upon the Word. Be a doer of the Word of God. Yes. Be in a place where you can hear the Word, feed upon that Word, and you'll see that that will begin to affect you, it'll affect your loved ones, it'll affect your family, Understanding will come. Clarity will come to your mind. Areas of fog. Areas where you've not quite been sure what the plan was. What the purpose of God was. It will begin to come crystal clear yes. as you spend time in that word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Because God wants to speak to your spirit, brother. Amen. 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 Now see, a man, he can confirm what God has spoken to your heart. But he's not going to necessarily speak through a man to get to your heart. He'll speak directly to your heart. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. Yep. So if you're a child of God, the Holy Spirit will speak to your spirit. Things, wisdom, direction that you need to know and that you need to have. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Glorify you. Glorify the Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, brother, as as when you turn around to walk back, um, now this may or may not be for you, but I sensed uh, a move, and God will take care of that. Whatever, whatever that means, whatever that, because I don't understand it all. If I try to interpret 
in my own self what God is saying for somebody else, you mess it up every time. That's right. Amen. But you just keep your eyes on Him. And whatever that concerns, it'll be all right for you. Okay. Amen. Amen. I was uh, uh, ministering someplace and, and ministered to this, this one lady. She testified later all about it. But uh, I, I turned back to her and I said, there's something about a house, isn't there? God's got it. Well, they've been trying to sell a house for for some period of time, and and you know they were overly concerned about it, and and, and God just took care of the whole thing. Amen. And I was told that uh, even before I left, they had received an offer on on the house. Praise God. Amen. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. But I think what they're, they're holding out for a little more money too. Praise the Lord. Well, God's got it. He's got it taken care of. Yes, He does. Amen. Yeah. See, sometimes we don't just exactly understand. Mm -hmm. uh, Everything. True. And and uh, we're going to look at something else here real quick. Uh, I did not intern, uh, intend to turn there, and it might even take me a minute to uh, to find it. It's going to be in the book of Acts, where uh, uh, da 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 da. Praise the Lord. Where uh, Agabus came down and <clears throat> took uh, Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet. Does anybody know where that is? Uh, just right offhand? I know it's an axe here. I'm really close by it. You know what I did? Um, I had bought a new Bible. And for the last year, I've been having to tell everybody that I bought a new Bible. And uh, anyhow, I went back to my old Acts Bible, 21. Acts 21. You see, I was right here at Acts 20. <clears throat> yes. Acts 21. I was only a page away. See, and I had this Bible trained. This is my old Bible. I went back to my old Bible, and Karen is like, don't go back to your old Bible. It'll affect the anointing. <laughs> Well, anyhow, it, it, it may, but uh, praise the Lord. Acts 21, did you find it? Yes. Now, in verse 10 and 11, Agabus comes down, and he was a prophet. He's actually one of my favorite prophets. All right, And, and he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and, and, and feet and so on. And, and prophesied, thus said the Holy Ghost, uh, this is what's going to happen to the man bound in Jerusalem. Well, in just a few verses before, in Acts 21, verse 4, and finding disciples, we tarried there seven days, who said to Paul through the Spirit that he should not go up to Jerusalem. Well, then over here in verse 11, Agabus, who's a prophet, is saying, you're going to go to Jerusalem, and here's what's going to happen to you. So, to me, it would seem like there's a contradiction there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, this is going to help us to go deeper, you understand? Yeah. To understand this. Agabus, who stood in the office of a prophet, s demonstrated, signified by the Spirit with that, that, that girdle, that wrap, binding his own hands and feet, what was going to happen. <clears throat> But the disciples said, through the Spirit, don't go up. Now here's what happened. All right, Agabus told what the Holy Spirit was saying. The disciples sensed in their spirit the danger, the very same thing that Agabus sensed, but put their own interpretation on it and said, don't go. Mm -hmm. Because when, when you sense danger, you might not know all the details of it, but you know there's something wrong, something's dangerous here, something's not quite right. And so human intuition is, uh, don't go, avoid that, stay away from that. True. Be warned, you know, no, 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 no. Agabus comes along and says, thus saith the Holy Ghost, and you're going to go. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Now, who was right? Well, both of them were to a degree. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. Agabus was 100% right. These disciples here, they put their interpretation on what they were sensing in their spirit. 
And you got to be very careful of that. Mm -hmm. I, I had called out a man uh, not very long ago, and the discerning of spirits went in operation, and in the spirit I saw him sitting at a very uh, uh, great desk. And he had a, 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 a book open. Okay? Now, I never said what I thought I was... I told him what I saw. Alright? <clears throat> and I, I, I sensed things in my spirit. And I told him, I said, I see you sitting at a desk. And I, I see this book. And you're, you're taking the, the things that you've studied in the Word of God and, 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 and you're, you're able to share them and you speak them. I said, there's an anointing on your life. And very similar to, to a minister. And I had never seen the guy before. Never, didn't know anything about him. And I went on. And you, I tell you what, the devil fought me tooth and nail after that. Hmm. That I had missed it. That I was wrong. Well, come to find out, he come to the, to the next service, the next night, and it shook my hand, introduced himself to me. He was a lawyer, mm. not a minister. He was a lawyer, and he said, I told my secretary what you had said to me uh, last night, and he said, the secretary said, see, I told you, I told you that your desk was a pulpit. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, see, in my mind, I, I, I had it off. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't say it. I didn't speak it because mm -hmm. the, the, the revelation was 100% was accurate. But in my mind, I'm thinking one thing when actually it was something different. Mm -hmm. Now, see how easy it would be to misinterpret that? Mm -hmm. Amen. I have, I have actually come across where, where people thought it was time to get rid of the pastor. <laughs> See, they were picking things up in their spirit, but they had no clue what, what God was trying to say. They, they were sensing things needed to change in the church, and well, uh, to them, it's, it's time for us to get a new pastor. That, that's dumb. <laughs> Amen? No, that, that, that's not exactly what... Now, there might be come a time where, where a pastor could move. I'm not saying that he is or anything like that. But, but sometimes people can misinterpret what... God's actually saying to them. Right. One, if, if you think God's speaking something to you, you should come talk to your pastor. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because he's the highest office in the church. Mm -hmm. Not deacons, not elders, not board members. Amen? Come on. If God's going to do something uh, in a church, he does not go through a committee. Amen. Because he is head of the church. Amen. And if he's got to go through a committee to get anything done in the church, then nothing would ever get done in the church. Amen. 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 So Praise the Lord. So, <clears throat> and I don't know why I'm just sharing all this, but it's, it's the truth anyhow. We were going to go a totally different direction. But, but as a pastor, you can come to your pastor, and God has equipped him to... To, with wisdom and understanding and ability to bring the very most out of you. Yeah, that's, that's, that's part of his job. I don't have that anymore. I pastored for, for about 20 years altogether. I don't have that. And see, I'm, my anointing is completely different. I would rather have my anointing than the pastor's anointing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Somebody asked me, you know, uh, if I miss pastoring. No, I don't. Now, I loved it. <laughs> and, it's, and it's wonderful. Okay. But, see, the, the, the pastor is like the ring finger. He's married to the church. Okay. Um, when, when I was pastoring, you know, I... I, I enjoyed getting calls at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Because that means that's an opportunity to minister under the anointing. Well, you know, don't follow me at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> because I, somebody one time they, uh, recently asked me if I had a word for them. <laughs> you know, and, and, and they're messaging me. Well, I, I, I do, but it might not be the one you want. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <clears throat> but I, I don't have that anointing. So I have to stay within where, where God has gifted me and graced me. And, and Pastor, he stays where God has gifted him and, and graced him. That's right. Amen. And so 
Don't come to me with your problems. Don't come to me with, you know, some sad tale. Go to the pastor. Because that's what he's... He is anointed Bring to it. hear your dreams. And he's anointed to listen to your long stories. And Now, now me... Uh, do you remember those uh, old infomercials that they played in the middle of the night? There was a, a syringe that... Uh, you could fill the tube with all kinds of garlic and spice and salt and pepper and and you know all whatever you want to stick in there and you jab it into a piece of meat you plunge that that spice into the middle of that roast and you cook it mm -hmm. well that's kind of how I am is I'll come and I'll stab you right in the middle <laughs> and I'll plunge that stuff right into inside of you and then I'll go down the road to the next place and do it all over again <laughs> amen <clears throat> but the pastor he's got to stay here and and and, and uh, you know I'll, I'll spice you up I'll put some good stuff into you, but he'll cook you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise God. <laughs> but now getting back to uh, Acts 21 here. How did how did I learn some of these things? Just by beating my head against the wall and getting rebuked and getting, you know, the, the Lord to share some things. Um, when I graduated from Rhema back in 91, you know, you, you got to love uh, Bible school students, and sometimes they're a blessing, and sometimes they're not. <laughs> and I was one of those that probably wasn't much of a blessing. Uh, I, I had nowhere to go except go back home to McAllister and, and work for my dad. And, and, and sometimes Bible school students can have, now I'm not saying if you're a Bible school student, you know, I'm not speaking derogatorily, but I'm talking about myself. You know, you, sometimes I feel like you might know everything. <laughs> and, and, and you've got an opinion about everything. Well, I, I'm there in church working for my dad there in McAllister, Oklahoma. And the Lord would begin to, to prompt me that in the service, there, there, it would be time for tongues, interpretation of tongues, or prophecy, or for something to happen. I would have that unction, that witness in my heart, but I would, I would just sit there. And there was another lady, and she was very eloquent with her words, and she would begin to, to speak out. And I mean, my blood would curdle when she would begin to speak out. And, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, I know her, that's just her, because she was very eloquent. She worked for the paper, and she would write up articles sometimes, and <clears throat> I mean, she could, she was the kind that she could read the telephone book and make you cry. I mean, she just had that ability uh, about her to do that, and so I'm thinking, that's just her, I know what's going on in her life. And I was having a major problem. And I'm thinking, why in the world doesn't, you know, Pastor Dad uh, say something? Why doesn't he correct her? And so I, I'm, I'm just there. But I never said a word to anybody. And this went on for months, several months. And I was having a major problem with, with this woman, you know, just spilling out her, you know, tongues, interpretation, whatever it was. And one day, bless my darling heart, God gave me what I call a mini vision. I mean, it was just like a flash card, a picture flashed right in front of me. And I saw myself full grown, same size I am now. <coughs> um, <laughs> let me bu button this button here. Yes, same size as I am now. Praise the Lord. And riding a tricycle. <laughs> and here I am, just riding this little tricycle in circles around the front of the church. I mean, little tassels coming out the handlebars, <clears throat> you know, red, red and white tricycle. And then another picture flashed in front of me, and it was this woman. And she was riding a bicycle with training wheels. And I got the picture, literally. <laughs> She was one step ahead of me. Because the tricycle was baby entry level bike riding. <laughs> I mean, it was the lowest of the lowest that you can go uh, in, in bike riding. And I was at the bottom. 
The next level is you graduate to a bicycle with training wheels and then eventually you get the training wheels taken off. Mm -hmm. And so here's she, full grown her, riding the bicycle. It had a little basket in the front, a little squeaky horn and all that. <clears throat> and she's riding around the front and I knew that she was one step ahead of me. See, I had a leading of the Spirit. She had a leading of the Spirit. She stepped out. I kept my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. And she was one step ahead of me. Cool. Now, did she get it right every single time? No. But what a better place where somebody loves you and cares about you and is watching over you and is willing to correct you in love mm -hmm. where you can grow right. and you can develop in the gifts and callings that God has placed on the inside of you? Amen? Mm -hmm. But see... <clears throat> Here she was, at least she was stepping out, and God was developing her. God was, uh, you know, cultivating things on the inside of her. Mm -hmm. And, but here I am, I'm just sitting there, keeping my mouth shut. I had a witness in my spirit, but I wouldn't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. You see, a lot of times, what God is wanting is for people to take that first step. Yes. Mm -hmm. To step out. True. That first one is the most difficult. But once you take it, they get easier after that. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. Amen? And so... If, if it's difficult for us to step out in the small things, do you think you'd really do it where the big things are concerned? No, you got to start doing it now. That's right. Amen. <clears throat> I was uh, in, in a place, and I don't always do this. Actually, it's, it's been a long time since I've done it. But I took off and ran around the, 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 the church. And you talk about cricket, cricket, <laughs> cricket. And I took off running around the church. <laughs> Amen. Not because I heard a thundering voice, thus saith the Lord, Greg, you are to run around the church. No, <laughs> I had the slightest little inkling that I was supposed to do that. Now, let me. how many of you are familiar with uh, horses and horseback riding? A, a, a few. All right. Now, my wife and I, we have, we have seven horses. And that, that's just our thing. Some, some ministers, they like their Harley Davidson motorcycles. I don't understand that. Some people like, you know, the golf. I don't understand that, you know. But uh, we like our horses. And my horse, Maverick, is about as good as they come. All right? And if I haven't ridden him for a long time, we'll saddle him up and we'll put the bridle on him. And I'll have to direct rein him a pretty good amount when I first start riding him again. Alright, because it's been probably a couple months. I haven't been on him. I've just been traveling and busy and, and, and so on. And I'll have to direct rein him to make him go to the right or to the left or stop and start and all the different things. And so I'll have to, you know, pull on the rein to the right, pull on the rein. Now, if I've been riding him consistently, you know, every other day or whatever for, for a period of time, I can take my little pinky finger and flick the rain, barely flick the rain, and he will go that way. I don't have to pull on him. I don't have to yank on him. I don't have to get physical with him. I mean, just the slightest little flick of the pinky finger, and he will go that way. David said to the Lord, Try the reins of my heart. Where some people will say, man, if it's God, He's just going to have to knock me down. Mm. Well, that just means that you're stubborn as an old mule. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's not a, a compliment. <laughs> you understand that? Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> where, you know, I had the idea that if I was ever going to fall under the power, that man is it, going to have to be all God, not me. Well, th th that's not entirely true. Amen? See, we need to become so sensitive to the things of God that the slightest movement of God's finger and we're there. Yes. Right. Now, there's something else about this. The Bible says in the book of Psalms that He will guide us and instruct us with His eye don't be as the horse or the mule 
that has to have a bit put in its mouth in order for it to obey us. In other words, we're to become so sensitive to the things of the Spirit of God that He does not even have to flick His little finger, but He just looks a certain way and we're moving. That's ultimately where we're supposed to get to. Amen. Ultimately, that I mean, if God even just slightly looks a certain way, we're moving already. So good. That's the way that we're supposed to be. Amen. And so here's these disciples, and they're they're no doubt sensing something about the apostle Paul in his in their spirits. And they might have got their little huddle together, and man, you know, I, I just sense something so dangerous. Yeah, I, I, I do too. And they say, "Don't go! Don't go! Don't go!" And Paul says, brothers, you're breaking my heart. But the prophet comes down because, see, he was more exercised in the things of the Spirit of God. He says, you know, this is the way it's going to be. They're going to bind you and they're going to take you uh, to Jerusalem. Amen. Because it was the plan of God. God was ultimately trying to get him to Rome. That's right. That was the ultimate plan and the ultimate goal. But we got to be watchful and careful not to put our own spin and interpretation because of how we feel or how we think about certain things. Very true. Amen. <clears throat> but to judge it according to the Word of God and let God <coughs> excuse me, uh, carry these things out. Amen. Amen. Does anybody get anything at all tonight? I know this is very different. Yes, sir. I, I certainly did not uh, I, I, intend to go this direction. I mean, I, I had some perfectly good uh, things about healing and so on, but it always pays to go the direction that the Holy Ghost wants to go. Yes, Amen. Hallelujah. Father, Sambro Kushkata Bravita, Zembrake Daraisko Tashkabanda. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, brother, there's... There's direction that the Holy Spirit, even already, has begun to speak to you and to prepare you for in ministry. And in the ability that He's given to you. Because He's wanting to take you further than even where you are right now. And where you, where you are now is good, but He's wanting to take you even further. And so some things will have to get stripped off. Some things will have to drop off to get into the next phase and to the next place that He has for you, saith the Lord. So be willing and be sensitive to what He has for you. Because you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss what He has for you, saith the Lord. Prango supra kata pragavai, zefrodo skubruta brangaviste, la supra koskota. For that which is to come, and that which is yet down the road, depends on the things that you're doing now. So allow the Spirit, number one, to speak into your life. Allow anointed men and women of God to speak into your life. Because you'll be molded and you'll be shaped and fitted for the things that are down the road. There are things that you're not even ready for. There are things that have not even really entered your mind. If it were to be spoken now, and see it has been spoken. Yeah, things have been spoken. But it didn't register like it, it could have. But there are things that are yet down the road that you're being prepared for. And it's necessary 
for words to be said. Mentoring, shaping, molding to take place. So that you'll be thoroughly equipped and thoroughly prepared for what I have for you, saith the Lord. And if you be faithful and have an open and a teachable spirit, you'll make it. And all shall be well. And more and more and more light and understanding will come and you'll be able to walk in it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, some of that you may understand. Some of it, I know that you won't. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. But it'll come. Mm -hmm. It'll come. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Sister, come on up here if you would. You, yeah, come on up here. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, when, you know, as kids, we have these little, you know, little action figures, or maybe as some of the girls might have a little doll. And because you're so much bigger, you can grab that, that little doll, and you can hold the whole thing right in your hand. Well, that's how God has you. He has picked you up, and you are in His hand. Hallelujah. I'll not fail you. I'll not abandon you. For I am holding you in the strength of my right hand. I will be faithful unto you. Walk in the light that you have. Walk in the understanding that you possess. Walking in the word. And I will fight for you. And I will manifest myself unto you. And all that concerns you. So be strengthened. And be encouraged. For you are not alone. In this walk. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. Amen. You receive that sister? Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just magnify you. Yes, we do. We glorify you. Yes, we do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now it is available. For the whole church to come up to a higher level. If you'll decide, I'm hungry for the things of God. I'm not satisfied with what I have right now. And say, Lord, I want more of you. You can have it. For wherever there is hunger, and thirst for righteousness, I'll fill it. I've said it by my spirit, and I've said it in the word. I'll fill it. So I am calling you this night to a deeper place in me. And it'll start at the very top and work its way down to the very last member of this church. And if you'll follow me and obey and do the things that I give unto you to do individually and collectively as a church body, you'll never be the same. And do not fear areas of darkness and uncertainty and the things that you don't fully completely understand but if you walk humbly before me and walk in faith I will cause your natural eyes to
to see and to behold the very things that I have promised unto you and have said unto you. For there is a vision and there is a plan and a purpose that I have for this church. And it shall come to pass, it shall come to pass finally at last. For no man can stop it. Only don't turn away in doubt or fear or darkness. Look fully unto me and I'll cause you to be a showman of my glory and of my presence. Hallelujah. Lord, we receive it. Karen, you wrote something this morning. Do you still have that? This, this, this is exactly the perfect time to read that. Karen, uh, this morning, I know she was she was typing something out on her tablet as as we're worshiping God, and she had me read it after the service in, in the car. And th this is the time. So come up here real quick, if you would, and uh, I think everybody can hear you if if you just. Stand next to me and read that because it fits in perfectly. Well, when he said the showman, um, what I wrote down was God the showman. It says, God is a showman. He wants to be noticed for the great things he has done. He is worthy of the recognition for the things he has done. The houses and lands, the minds being restored, the bodies being made whole, the babies living and fulfilling his purpose. He wants to be noticed. Yes. He is righteous and willing, but will wait. He mu we must notice the things that he has already done on this earth in order to allow him to do more on the earth. He is waiting, waiting to be noticed. He is waiting for us to give him a place to work in our lives and release his power to fulfill the things that we need in our life. Whatever it is, whatever the need, he is waiting to be noticed, to be able to be the showman, to get the glory in our lives, and to be first. Hmm. Amen. And she got that from the Holy Ghost this morning during praise and worship. You know, it wasn't something clever that she was trying to, to think up. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just, with our hearts, we press into what you have for us. Father God, you're not finished yet. You've got a plan. You've got a purpose. And Father, we want that plan. We want that purpose. We're not satisfied with what we've had so far. We're thankful for it. We're thankful for all that you've done. But Father, we're wanting more. We're wanting to press in more than what we've ever seen before. Hallelujah. Father, we're not satisfied any longer. But Father God, we're answering your call to come in deeper. We're answering your call to come in deeper. Right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you're here tonight and you really want to answer that call to go in deeper in the things of God, I want you to come down here to the front. Amen. Coming down to the front, it just symbolizes your commitment to go deeper. Praise the Lord. Your desire for more. Now you're not looking to me, you understand. We're, we're, we're putting our eyes on God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to stay in an attitude of, of worship in the presence of God. Father, we commit ourselves. Let your own voice be heard. <clears throat> Father God, we want more of you. We want more of your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You talked about times of refreshing that come from the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we need that refreshing. We need that infilling <clears throat> to carry out your plan 
to carry out your purpose. Ha la basita bragando de bosho proto, kobe la basambra kere de bashata. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lando proso kobadalita, leva rasa kata brasondo. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So la monde le bekeriada, karabasondo le besita brakanda brabande le tebisa bataya. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Ramashambra Kiribasata. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Zumbron de Kiribasata. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we magnify you. We glorify you. Lord, we're thankful. We thank you for your presence here. We thank you for your glory here. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for the great and mighty Holy Ghost. He is our teacher. He is our guide to live big inside of us. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Fill us once again. Lord, fill us afresh and fill us anew. <coughs> In Jesus' name. Lord, anoint us with fresh oil. Oil. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Fill us anew with fresh oil. Oh, just let your hearts reach out for all that He has for us. All that He has for us tonight. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Go Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many of you are ready for, for more of the things of God? Yeah. Hallelujah. Huh? So, uh, brother, come on up here, if you would. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, I'm going to come by, and I'm going to lay hands on you. And it's this mode to receive. That's all you got to be thinking of, is I'm in the mode to receive whatever it is that God has for you. Yes. Amen. Yes. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. He, you, you're going to help me. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Because we're in a real tight, confined space, and and sometimes you just you, you need that extra hand. Praise the Lord. And whatever too that the Lord might. Praise the Lord. Now, now don't go in neutral, but be in receiving mode. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Sister, are you ready to receive? Amen. Then be filled and receive everything that He has for you. Hallelujah. That, praise the Lord. Be filled and receive everything that God has for you. Be filled and put your hands on your stomach. Be filled right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You may say, well, why did you hit her? Because... <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We'll come back to you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, don't get in your mind. Don't, don't get into your mind and be thinking and... <clears throat> We're operating out of our spirit t tonight. Koramanda, pray in the spirit for this. Sombron de Kiblabasipiata. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So Ramashanda Kita de Basabrata. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, now, Jennifer, just, just repeat after ha 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 ha
Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Keep saying it. Uh huh. <laughs> Keep saying it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. No, it's not stay in our mind, it's in our hearts, our spirits. Thank you. See, she needed that. Because as she's as she laughs, the Lord is arranging some things. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Keep keep laughing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Keep laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Keep arranging. Amen. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, the Lord. Yeah. You might say, can you just make yourself laugh like that? <laughs> Absolutely. Now, 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 brother, he, he let us all in singing, right? Now, how many of you know that the book of Psalms was Israel's prayer and song book? Yeah. Do, do you realize that? Mm -hmm. now, now, brother, were you one that was a Raymond student? Uh, yes. Okay. So you would know that Psalms is Israel's prayer and song book. All right. Now, we might have hymnals. We might, well, nowadays we got the over overhead. And we follow along. Um, does somebody have their Bible handy? Would you read Psalm 126? Now remember, this was their songbook. Read it out loud so everybody can hear you. Psalm 126, beginning with verse 1 down to verse 3. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. No, wait. This isn't just, you know, fanciful words. This was they they would they would sing this, they would chant this as as they're reading it. Go ahead. Then our mouth filled with laughter. Wait a second. <laughs> Somebody was up there, and they were following as they're reading it. They would read it at home. They would read it at the temple, and. When they would sing it, they were expected to do it. <laughs> Go ahead. And our tongue was singing. Laughed. See, we, it, it's an easy thing to, to be led singing. But have you ever thought about being led in laughter? <laughs> oh my, we are picking rocks tonight, aren't we? <clears throat> so, Jennifer, she's going to come up here... <laughs> And now wait a second here. Wait now. Read verse three. Everybody, listen. To verse three. And the Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Now, read the end of verse two and verse three. Uh, then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Who said? That great things have been done for them by the Lord. The heathen people.
people of the world. Why? Because they're laughing and they're singing. <laughs> they're laughing and they're singing and worldly people are saying, God has done great things for them. <laughs> Amen. 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 So Jennifer, you get up here and you start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, are, are, are we, is this the Bible or not? Is this just make-believe? <laughs> Go ahead. Now you know this must be God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, 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 just say it. How many feel funny? How many? How many feel like uh, you know that that that's just being foolish? The Bible says God took the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Amen. Amen. Ha 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 ha. The Lord's done. We got something to laugh about because the Lord has done great things for us. Ha 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 ha. 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 Ha ha. You see, if you're not in practice, it might take you a little while to prime the pump. If the pump's been real dry for a long time, you gotta. Amen. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 Oh, some of you got to do it by faith. Amen. Some of you just got to do it by ha 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 ha. Don't look at me. Ha 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 ha. See what? What, what are we doing? Stirring up deep wells. Yes, hallelujah. Stirring up deep, 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 deep wells. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I don't mean to step on your stuff. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. When the devil says no, you say ha. <laughs> When it doesn't look like you're going to make it, ha, 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 Amen. Amen. When you don't know how it's going to work out, ha, 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 Amen. And what will happen is they'll think you're drunk. They'll think you're nuts. They'll think you're crazy. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, now, come here, Jeffrey. Put your hands right on her stomach. Praise the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> See when the when the devil reminds you of your past and all the things that has happened to you in the past, you just say ha 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 See, you got a future. And he doesn't. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And all the things, all the people that might have been involved in the past and things that have been against you, uh, they didn't know any better. And you can just laugh. Because God knew all along He was going to bring you out. He knew all along. <laughs> Hallelujah. And all the good things that He has planned for you, all the good things that He has in store for you, ha, Ha 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 ha! Hallelujah. 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 And that's why we don't ever have to be sad about anything. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Come here, sister. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jeff, put your hands right on our stomach. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, we're not watching. We're participating. Thank you, Lord. We're all releasing faith for what God has for us. We're all believing God corporately together in the name of Jesus. Let that anointing just flow into you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on up here. Come on up here. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Jennifer, put your hands right on our stomach. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Fresh. Fresh and new right now in the name of Jesus. Fresh oil from heaven. Renewal, restoration, wholeness, fullness in the name of Jesus. Out of her spirit are going to flow rivers of living water. Rivers in Jesus' name. Just so we just allow that anointing to flow into you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. In Jesus' name. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the anointing flowing inside of you. You feel that, sister, going inside of you? Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. You're so Praise the Lord. Your spirit is receptive to the things of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Lord. Thank you. Here. I want you to help me. You stay you stay with me. Is that okay? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Full. Be filled in the name of Jesus. Be filled in the name of Jesus. So Rabakarabashata. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're, we're, we're coming this way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Be filled in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Filled. Filled. In the name. Thank you, Lord. Be filled in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 You want to be prayed for? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, Grandma. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord Rabasata. In the name of Jesus, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with power. In the presence of God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, be filled. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. In Jesus' name, full of the things of the Spirit of God. Be filled, in Jesus' name, full of the things of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Oh, you've got your word, brother. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to do it. Hambra <laughs> Mokoso. Filled. Filled <clears throat> with that anointing. Oh, there's a greater anointing that's available to you. A greater grace, a greater empowerment. That's all for you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sweetheart, for, for helping. Oh, you're welcome. Amen. Did you enjoy that too? Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes. For the ADHD. They said he has ADHD. Yeah. Speak it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We come together for healing. And yes. In the name of Jesus, we release the anointing of God <clears throat> to go into His body to restore, to renew, to repair. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Pray specifically for some things for her for healing. Mm -hmm. Amen. For my body and for my oppression. And sure. Well, you know that the anointing 
it'll drive out sickness and disease. Yes. Whatever the devil's tried to put on you, it'll drive that away. Thank you, Jesus. Do you believe that? Yes, I do. And do you believe that he'll do something for you right now? Yes, I do. Amen. Then receive it right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. See, according to her faith, be it under her. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sister, come on up here for just, for just a minute. Praise I, I've never met you before. Amen. Hallelujah. Cobranda lascatrando proscupra da cava vesvene, shavradisca to braganskatai, nando procasta vrandilicho, tamasa capranda. Thank you, Lord. From these hands shall flow love, and from these hands shall flow grace and ability. For there is an anointing upon you and upon these hands. Use these hands as I open up the doors and open up the opportunities for you to share and to minister forth what I have placed within your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And you will find that your days will become brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Hallelujah. Do you receive that? Amen. Then receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Have him come on up here. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Do you mind if I pray for her, lay hands on her? Absolutely. Amen. Oh, Praise the Lord. Don't ever feel bad about calling me forward or her Sure. Forward. We want to receive all God's Amen. God for us. Pastor Steve pointed me back here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Father, we come to you right now in Jesus' name. Jesus. And Father God, we release the healing anointing into this child from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. And Father, I thank you. I thank you that you are more than enough. And so by faith, we release that anointing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Come here, brother. Shoraba karabasita alendala kerabashata. Thank you, Lord. You are an anchor. Yes. You are an anchor. You have kept things from drifting off and floating away. Thank you. And even though that there have been difficult times, yea, the wind has blown against you and even against your family because of the anchor of the Word of God and the Spirit of God, you've been kept and, 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 and preserved unto this hour. And now you're going to notice a difference. A greater grace and a greater strength is going to come upon you from this moment forward. And you will have an ability in the things of God that's going to affect every area of your life and every area of your family. And they will even in time look upon you and say, He's not the same person that I have known for so long. There's a difference about Him. There's a grace about Him. There's a power even about Him that He is walking in from this moment forward. Hallelujah. And you will look back and you will say, it began and it happened this night. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Does that mean anything to you, brother? Amen. Hallelujah.